The infinite spinner. Some people will be okay. <coughs> um, welcome everyone to today's Webmaster Central Office Hours Hangouts. Uh, my name is John Mueller, and with us is Martin Split. Uh, we're Webmaster Trends Analyst at Google here in Switzerland. And part of what we do are these office hour hangouts. Uh, we we have a slightly different setup this time, which is more like a meeting room, um, because we're expecting one more person to join. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, but uh, I I have all of your questions here, so we we can go through those. Or if any of you want, you're welcome to jump in with the first question from your side. Hi guys. Uh, Hi. Hey. And. I asked a question about the ranking of one of the biggest domains, Amazon.com, and their product pages, which lack the content part, but get the high SR, uh, SERP positions. Can you please give some information how it really works, or is there a secret why they're getting all those top ranked without even having a proper content on the web pages? There's not really a secret. So I, I looked at those pages that so you mentioned a query there and I looked at that and mm -hmm. from, from my point of view there's there's content on there, the reviews on there. It it feels like there's stuff on there that would make sense to show in the search results. So I I don't think I don't see anything uh, specifically problematic with those pages where there would need to be some kind of a, a secret Amazon bonus or anything like that. Uh, sometimes really large sites do have pages that aren't really perfect, but the rest of the site is really good. So uh, sometimes it can happen that we rank pages that individually might not be fantastic, but mm -hmm. uh, are otherwise on, on a reasonable website. So that might be happening to some of those pages that you're seeing, but even the kind of for, for the query that you mentioned, that mm -hmm. content looks reasonable. You can buy the product there. It's like it has the technical details. From from my point of view, that well, that's, that's kind of basically the, that's basically the case. Uh, sorry if I interrupted you. So technically, there is no technical information. They're like five sentences, and it's they're short two word sentences, and there are five of them. Basically, it's like fifteen words of description of the product, and everything else is completely links to other PDPs. And in terms of review, there was just one review. That's why we get kind of concerned because. We started working on the platform, then we closed our uh, products. But you know, this kind of weird uh, PDP just simply appear from nowhere, and like th there is no useful content because I work in the, in this field currently for the specific products, and got really surprised when I saw just really t uh, ten to fifteen words, and it's not even like looks like to be a proper description of the product. That's why I asked this question. Maybe I saw a different page, or maybe they serve different pages to different users, but. From from my point of view, like look, looking at the query yeah, and looking really, at the product, yeah, looks it really looks good. it looks okay. And I I think in, in general, uh, it's it's always possible to find pages that are kind of suboptimal on on mm -hmm. larger websites. And when when you're competing w with a really large competitor like that, it's it's always going to be hard. So that's something where I wouldn't purely focus on like the number of words or the amount of technical information that you have there. Uh, if you're like, competing one-to-one -one with a really big website that does a lot of stuff really well, then that's, that's going to be really hard. So my usual recommendation would be to try to find angles that, that are unique that you can cover that they're not interested in even trying to cover. Also, I wouldn't fall for the, oh, it's only 17 words. So as I said, as, as John mm -hmm. said, um, we might see a different page, but the page that I'm seeing, if I would be a user, and wanting mm -hmm. to buy this camera, it tells me the video resolution, it tells me the frame rate, it tells me the interface, the measurements, the price, the shipping information, it has mm -hmm. reviews, it has answered questions, um, it has all the manufacturer data, Looks, it, mm -hmm. it's not the length of a product detail page, it's the content, and as far as I'm aware, the content page that I'm being served looks pretty decent. I, okay. I think I think what you might also want, want to keep in mind is that we generally crawl from the US. 
so if, for example, they serve a, an empty page to users outside of the US, but they serve the full content to users in the US, then we would still be able to index that full content page. And that sometimes throws, throws things off for our side because nobody likes to do things for Switzerland. So we always see empty stuff or like you can't buy it. Uh, but we would still index that in Google and show it worldwide because we, we only see the US version because technically that's where our data centers are that do the crawling. Mm. And at least in my search results is on position seven for that query. So like there's a bunch of other pages that are ranking higher, at least for, for me. I know. So something changed during the this the last week, honestly. Amazon started dropping down. <laughs> I don't know okay. if it's a coincidence or something else. <laughs> it was surprising to me, but yes, and uh, you see top two results is our pages basically. That's that's a good news, but also bad news. So I was, was really curious if there is like a small secret or you just because they have a large volume of pages and links everywhere. Like they have a very high rate uh, rank for the overall domain. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure. All right. Any other questions from from you all before we jump in? Hello, John. Hello, Martin. Hi. Yeah. So I have a client, and it is a federal uh, medical center, and all content uh, obviously goes through the doctors before. Uh, it publishes on the website. So do you think it is a good idea to let users know that uh, information was uh, checked by doctors and also put uh, relevant structured data? Uh, what I mean, it's a medical center after all, and it is logically assumed that you can trust the information. So for example, a page uh, which provides information about uh, a surgery, uh, where you can read about a surgery, check prices and make an appointment, and uh, the content of such pages also checks by doctors because it uh, contains medical facts. So do I need to put information about this uh, particular doctor who checked uh, the page there? I, do you think? I think you don't need to do any of that. But if you're doing something good for your users, then I, I, would, I would highlight that. And, uh, Tell people what what it is that you're doing and uh, highlight kind of the the value that that is behind your content. I I think in, in general, if you're spending time and money to make things better, then don't hide that. Like don't don't be shy with that. Uh, I realize with with all of the EAT things, it's like people would want to do do that especially, but. I think just generally from, from purely a, a user point of view, if you're doing something good and it's not directly visible on your pages, then users might not realize that you're actually doing that. OK. OK, I get it. Thank you. Sure. OK, let me run through some of the submitted questions so we don't lose track of them completely. Um, let me just refresh the list so that we get the newer ones. Um, when I select a domain property in Search Console, the property has no disavow tool. Um, yes, that's true. Uh, some of the tools in Search Console are only available in the older version of Search Console. Uh, we're working on moving everything over, but uh, as uh, as some things are still in the old one, you still need to use kind of the traditional properties. Usually verification is pretty easy, so that should be less of an issue. Uh, with the desktop version, I have structured data, but uh, no AMP version. So does it violate Google's policy because of two different versions? It doesn't violate our policies, but we really, really want you to have the AMP version be equivalent to the normal version of your website. Uh, so structured data is usually less of a problem, but uh, especially content-wise, navigation-wise, internal linking, all of that should be equivalent on AMP so that when users go to your AMP page, they're not served a stripped-down page that doesn't serve their needs. Um, I know that's something that the AMP team is, is always kind of struggling with because people think, well, I'm just make a really fast page, and to make a fast page, I will show no information. Uh, but for users, that's a terrible experience. And in the long run, that's not going to be good for your site. Um, 
When the 90 days is up, after you've used the URL removal tool, does Google try to recrawl the URL directly? If so, does it see the robots.txt file, or is it only when it spiders the site? Um, so the, the URL removal tool only hides the search result in the search results page. It doesn't change anything with crawling and indexing. Uh, so usually what happens is we, we hide it in the search results, and we will continue to crawl the page. And if that page is blocked from indexing, if it has a no index, or if it's blocked by robots text, or it's a 404, then we'll drop it from our index, and we won't have to crawl it as much anymore. So it's not after the 90 days. It's more that during this time, we'll work to kind of reprocess that page. Um, so I think the question kind of goes in the same thing. And also covers the, the kind of the quirk about robots text and no index. So if you have a no index on a page and you block it by robots text, then we don't see the no index because we can't crawl it. Uh, so I'd recommend doing either or. If you do both of them, then we just don't see the no index. Um, Question about JSON schema markup for my handmade one-of-a-kind products. I don't have a global identifier, and Search Console gives me a warning for not adding one. I refuse to just make one up. Um, I, so, so there are two things here. Uh, on the one hand, this is a warning. So it's not, it's not an error that will, say, that will block everything. It's basically just saying, well, it would really help us to have an ID here. So if there were multiple versions of this product or multiple people selling the same product, we, we could group them together, potentially. Uh, so that's kind of the one thing. Uh, it, it's not that we would like not process it at all. It's not an error. It's just a warning. You don't have to fix all warnings. Uh, a lot of sites have warnings with structured data, and that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, on the other hand, depending on how much you're or how many products you're selling, it might make sense to try to get one of these IDs uh, so that you can use that. If, especially if you're selling something that other people are reselling, then maybe that makes sense. Um, but uh, ultimately, that part is, is definitely up to you. I, I certainly wouldn't go out and just make them up. Apparently, you just register your company, and then you can start enumerating your product. So maybe it's not, not that much of a hassle. I, I don't really know. But again, it's, it's a warning. It's not, it won't break everything. Uh, I'm working. Yeah. I wanted to, to quickly ask you, since you touched the products and catalog, question about the jackpot position. Uh, there's uh, like we see that one of our products that we manufacture basically has the wrong uh, name and descriptions just because it was uh, launched uh, or submitted to Google a long time ago. And all other, uh, let's say, uh, read, uh, sorry, distributors use the same wrong name. Is there a way that we can just uh, feed Google the correct product description, its correct GTIN number or whatever unique identifier so it fixes the overall index, so it like fixes the major product information, not the leg so it doesn't use the legacy one. No, I don't. I don't know. Um, that that's something you'd probably need to check with the the folks from from the shopping side. I I don't know who who would be best to get in touch with that. Um, if you if you want, you can drop your your information in the chat, and I can forward that on to the shopping team. Um, maybe there's something that uh, they could send back to you. Would be great. Thank you. Cool. Um, I'm working on geographical pages uh, for UX. I hired a photographer to capture relevant images of the region. I'm wondering how Google distinguishes between new photography and existing stock photography, and if this can change search results. Uh, so what, what would definitely happen is we would see these as separate images, and we would index them as separate images. Uh, in Google Images, we, we would show them individually. They're unique images, even if it's the same scenery, even if it's a similar view to existing ones. Uh, they're, they're new images, like the lighting is different, 
everything is slightly different. So that's something from that point of view, we would treat them as, as individual things and rank them individually. Uh, from a web search point of view, we would not really care what you use with regards to, to the images. Uh, so in web search, we, we focus on, on the textual content there. Uh, we don't have kind of this differentiator where we'd say, well, this image is stock photography, therefore it's bad. Uh, we essentially just say, well, there's an image here, there's an alt attribute. Um, we can index the image for Google Images. We can double check to see if that's a unique image that we need to index individually. Um, but for normal web search, we, we wouldn't really need to take that into account. Uh, so from, from a web search point of view, that would probably not change a lot. Uh, for Google Images, it would change things. Uh, for users, I imagine it would change things as well. Um, with EAT, how much value do external links carry? Surely providing that you're an expert on page is not sufficient. What else matters? Mentions or external links from relevant sites. Uh, so we, we don't have any explicit information with regards to what you need to do there. Uh, a lot of this comes from the, the Google Raider guidelines, which are not direct search results or search ranking factors. Uh, but rather, this is what we what we give folks when they evaluate the quality of our search results. Uh, so from that point of view, it's not that you would need to kind of gain this through links or anything like that. Um, but rather, this is something that normal people look at when they review the quality of the search results, and which perhaps uh, normal users would would kind of think about as well. Like, can I trust this website? So from that point of view, it's not a matter of like you need to put these five words on your website and then get, get a link from this other site. That's definitely not, not the case, uh, but more a matter of really like how you present your website overall and how users would perceive that. Uh, my website is still crawling with desktop Googlebot. How much time will it take to change to mobile Googlebot? Uh, so we we've switched over a significant part of the web to mobile first indexing but we haven't switched everything over uh, you don't need to do anything to kind of force that switch over uh, our systems use a number of algorithms to try to determine when a website is ready overall when we do that on a per domain basis and when we think that it's ready overall we'll switch things over uh, so that's kind of the, the setup that we have there. Uh, there's no specific time where we'd say, well, this Oops. Um, so from, from that point of view, you don't need to do anything specific. Hi. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi. This is Alex from Greece. How are you? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Uh, I have uh, a question regarding this uh, crawling issue with the desktop bot. We had uh, switched to mobile first indexed on uh, November of uh, 2018. But uh, a couple of months ago, we have switched back to desktop bot. Do you think that is normal? Is, uh, is this something that uh, you have seen before? That usually wouldn't be happening, but I I don't know exactly what you're seeing, so it's it's really hard to say. W would you able to uh, add the the URL maybe in the chat? Then I can take a look at that afterwards. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I have uh, I have made a comment uh, with uh, the whole situation, so you might uh, read my question later in the. Yeah, I, conversation. Okay. I, I, I saw your question, but I, I think you didn't mention the URL. So okay. I, I don't know which, which site it is. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I dropping, I'm, I'm dropping it to the chat. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thanks a lot. Uh, hi, John. Just a quick hi. question here. Yeah, sure. yeah, so so uh, this is with regards to you know, content duplication. 
we we usually understand is that duplication is not under google guideline right and 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 i think that's a very very fair uh, point to put across but uh, we were facing an issue where uh, if i could put it uh, a product a very unique product was being offered by multiple brands right and mm -hmm. we were creating the pages for those brands so if you if i think from a content perspective the technical uh, specifications or the way the product is structured will be the same the only thing that it will be differentiated is by the brand name that is offering so how how is that content uh, being will that be treated as duplication or how it will be handled um we we treat it on on several levels the duplicate content on the one hand if the whole page is copied then that's that's easy like the whole html page then we can see that it's a duplicate uh, on the other hand if a part of the page is copied then we can see that that part of the page is duplicate and what happens when just a part of the page is duplicate is we will index the whole whole page. We will index all of those versions. And if someone is searching for a specific part that is only in that duplicated section of the page, then we will try to pick one of those pages to show. Uh, so that's for, from our point of view, that's kind of normal because we, we can recognize that uh, the same content is available on different sites. It doesn't make sense to show all of the different versions of the same content. Usually what happens, especially with e-commerce sites, is uh, that uh, there are other things involved that, that help us to pick the right one. Uh, so if someone is searching for something local and we can recognize the store is local, then we know it's duplicated content, but this is the local version, so we'll try to show that one. Uh, so those are kind of the things that, that come up there. In general, when it, when it comes to making sites, um, oftentimes you, you don't have time to write uh, product descriptions for everything. Uh, so it makes sense to try to add additional value through other parts of the page, maybe through reviews on the on the page. Um, maybe you have your own product photos. Maybe you have some something else that you're doing unique to your website, to unique to those specific products. And highlighting all of that makes it a lot easier for us to say, well, this is actually a unique version. We need to make sure that we don't just filter it out because it has a small description that's the same across different sites. Same question. Okay. Say if say if you wanted to change from language target language region to just region, and you redirect that respective URL, would you lose uh, ranking within that region because you're no longer region targeting? It just goes to the .com. Um, so if you're using geo targeting, then that would be kind of a generic page instead of the, the local page. And for queries where we can tell that the user is looking for something local, then that might have an effect. But if you're not using geo targeting or if people are not explicitly looking for something local, then that wouldn't change anything. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Hey, John. Hi. Hi. Hey, Dan. Greetings from Dublin, Ireland. Um, I have a question for you regarding sitemaps. So um, I wanted to get uh, a couple of pages uh, in a XML sitemap. So I ran a crawl uh, in Screaming Frog and, and lashed them up uh, to the developers to put on our uh, server so that I could submit it in Google Search Console. But when I got it, it was actually on a subdomain and not on the domain itself. Um, now it's in the sitemap index, so I was just wondering: um, can like will Google, the Googlebot, come in, uh, find the sitemap index, find that even if it's on a subdomain and the URLs are for the actual main domain, can it find that uh, XML sitemap and will it crawl those URLs, or does it have to be on the domain itself? Um, if if we get the sitemap submitted individually, then it has to be within the same path. Um, on the other hand, if it's submitted through Search Console and you have the subdomain also verified in the same account, then that would work. So that's kind of the, the way that sitemaps works is uh, for kind of un, unauthenticated submissions, I guess. Like if you don't do it in Search Console, then the URLs within the sitemap have to be below the path of that sitemap file. Uh, if you're doing it through Search Console, then the URLs in the sitemap file can be for any valid property within your Search Console account. OK. Cool. Thank you. Sure. 
All right. More questions from you side. I mean, I, I have more in this list, so I can continue running through those. But up to you. JavaScript questions or specific technical questions. <laughs> oh, you feel, you know, so you I, feel yeah. this, <laughs> this is what happens. OK, my site is still being crawled with the desktop crawler. How much time will it take to switch to mobile Googlebot? Okay, can take a while. Um, there's no. There's another question in there that asks, like, can I switch to mobile Googlebot? There's no way to opt in or out. We're just progressively changing uh, or moving uh, sites to um, to mobile first indexing, but uh, there's no way to like tell you, oh yeah, next week it's going to be you. Um, be patient. It'll happen. It'll be fine. Hi again. Hi. I I I have asked this uh, a couple of minutes ago, but uh, I think uh, uh, you weren't in the conversation oh, okay. regarding the switch from uh, Google Smart uh, Smart uh, Google Smart uh, Phone Bot uh, to the Google Desktop one. We have uh, switched to uh, a Google uh, smartphone bot on November uh, 2018, but a couple of months ago, we have switched back to a Google desktop. Do you think, uh, do you think that this is something normal? And uh, why this uh, might have happened? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think you, you dropped the, I the, dropped the, the URL. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I need to check with, mm -hmm. with the team kind mm -hmm. of what the status is there. Um, did, did you get a notification in Search Console? No notification or uh, whatsoever. And uh, what but is for the more, switch to mobile, did you get one? Uh, we had the notification that uh, we have switched to a smartphone bot, but uh, never a notification that we have uh, switched back. OK. Hmm. I, I don't think we have notifications that we switch back. <laughs> but it's something in, in talking with the team, they they generally wouldn't switch sites back. Yeah. So that's something where from from discussions with them, if they switch one site over and uh, it turns out the website does a redesign and then doesn't work so well on mobile anymore, then it's it's tough luck. Like we switched over. Uh, so I, I think maybe something weird happened in your case. What is but... strange? What is strange is uh, that uh, we are still top performant at Google Search. We are top performant at Google News. Our AMP pages are uh, uh, at top performance, 99% uh, accessibility, SEO rankings, etc. But uh, and uh, the crawling from uh, then the crawling we see at our logs from uh, Google Smartphone Bot is at about 70%, and the Google Desktop Bot is at about uh, 30%. Yeah. That's why we are that's, that's a little bit normal. skeptical. No, yeah, but that's, yeah, that's it's normal, normal. but uh, why is that uh, is, uh, mentioned as a Google uh, Desktop? And uh, I can normal. send you the screenshots. Yeah. I mean. Screenshots would be useful, but okay. in in general, um, when we switch to mobile first indexing, we still have a split of like eighty twenty or seventy thirty oh, okay. uh, desktop and mobile. So it's yeah. not purely mobile then. And for some some kinds of requests, we we just use a desktop Googlebot. Uh, for example, I think the the shopping requests are done with guest desktop Googlebot. I, I think for a new site, that doesn't really matter. Uh, okay. But uh, depending on the website, if you look at the overall traffic, then it won't be 100% mobile or even 90% mobile. There will also be always be like 20, 30, 40% still with, with desktop. But I, I can definitely take a look at that with, with the team. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, you also, I think, asked about the Chrome uh, what was it? The the new Google Chrome, Chrome suggestions. suggestions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I have no information on that. How how that comes together? Um, because 
in in the discover feed that's something where we do use the normal crawling and indexing and it's it's kind of separated out but i don't know how the chrome suggestions works there or how how you would like rank there and i i suspect it wouldn't be a matter of a technical issue but rather that i don't know some fancy chrome ranking factor which apparently is now a thing um yeah cool i i'll double check with that too with the team though thanks a lot thanks a lot sure all right we're kind of running low on time but if yeah. any of you want want to ask more questions we it's like we have I, a bunch of you here so i have another question okay go for uh, it you mentioned before that the version of the desktop should be exactly the same as the mobile one uh, regards in regard of uh, content or uh, markup wise as well because uh, because yeah. we don't have uh, uh, the same the exact same uh, template on desktop and the mobile we detect the user agent and we and we are using a separate desktop template and a, se a separate uh, mobile template to be more optimal for the user it's uh, uh, it's much better performant if you are using less markup more uh, uh, more optimized images uh, smaller images etc yeah what is your opinion on that that's perfectly fine yeah okay thank you so the, the thing I, I would watch out for is with mobile first indexing, when, when we do that, we will only use the mobile version for indexing. We'll, like I said, we still crawl with the desktop sometimes, but we use the mobile for indexing. Uh, so things like internal linking, we would use the mobile version. So if on the mobile version you don't have any of the navigation, then that would be a problem. Okay. Um, but if the navigation is there and the layout is different, the HTML is different, it's like that's, that's totally fine. Perfect. Thank you. One last JavaScript Ooh. question. Okay. So I was just wondering. I, I know you don't uh, just just. It's a little bit close to my previous question, but uh, what's the what's the factor? What's the metric that looks okay? You look at that. Okay, this website is going to go into two waves, and this one is easy. So we see that quite a lot of JavaScript websites are not within two waves. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is not enough JavaScript or whatever. Actually, we have quite a lot of bots recently to to play with that because we're investigating that <laughs> do you want to answer that or should i answer that i can hand wave i, I, can I, hand know, wave. That john, <laughs> I know that john has some worse questions so um these days two wave indexing or the two waves of indexing play less and less of a role so basically generally speaking um you may see a lot of websites that are not using javascript that are still going through basically two waves and you might see some you might see a wait, bunch wait, of... Wait, 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 wait. Explain in, that. Right. Okay, so how do I put this? Um, <laughs> so basically, like heavy CSS every, or... pretty much... No, so here's the thing. Pretty much every website, when we see them for the first time, goes through rendering. Mm -hmm. So there's no indexing before it hasn't been rendered. And there are certain heuristics that if we see after a while, like, oh, this, this page, actually, the renderer does not diff as much. Um, or doesn't diff like it, it, it looks the way before like we, we get so what happens so is we do a, a crawl domain. right we do a crawl which means yeah let's say you get a new domain you learn how much cpu this new domain was no. taking no or that's not what we do what we do is we do, a, <laughs> we do an http request we get something back right some html maybe it's mm -hmm. an it's a bare bones html and <laughs> all it does is load some javascript and run the javascript um then this html that we got from the from the original HTTP GET request from the crawl goes into rendering, rendering lines to JavaScript, boom, a lot of content happened that wasn't there before. So we're like, aha, oh, okay. okay, so this needs to be rendered. But there is a heuristic so, so, that is very, so rarely. Do you look at the difference between yes. the initial HTML and then yeah. if after rendering you see extra content? Yeah. Okay. And the, the interesting thing is that, so what I want to make very, very clear, I, because I talked to the team and I was surprised about this. Um, I thought this is a lot more, this is still a lot more, if, like, more frequently happening that we are going like, oh, all right, we're going to skip rendering. It is not as frequently happening anymore. So, like, for many, many websites, even if they do not run JavaScript, they might still go through the render phase because it doesn't make a difference as much. 
Because it's cheap for us. It's cheap. It's okay. cheaper than the complexity that we infer. So like there's very, very few cases and the in internals of that are very complicated and I still haven't fully like grasped what exactly triggers the heuristic. Because what we see that there are quite a lot of JavaScript websites that never go to through like two waves. Um, and there are some websites that that go through to the way like we again we don't see really a difference. So this yeah, it's, the, so one of the factors for you is like fuzzier. the difference between like the the, the initial the initial uh, crawl HTML and, whatever yeah. or then the render DOM yeah and okay crawl DOM that's and interesting DOM. and I wouldn't say that two waves of indexing are dead but it's definitely something oh, they're that not. they're absolutely <laughs> not but it's it's definitely I expect eventually rendering crawling and indexing will will come closer together we're not there yet but I but I know that teams are looking into it so you would no think... plans no deadlines no roadmaps to be announced yet but, but you, you winked twice uh, <laughs> you winked but what about link juice martin uh, how, how does link juice play into <laughs> raw with rendering <laughs> just to finish that because i have this concept in my head that javascript SEO is dying slowly it's gonna eventually dissolve because you guys are getting better with that so Basically, you are on on the path of just killing two waves eventually completely, right? Can we? I com so, so I, I would <laughs> I would say that that we're we're hoping to make it all yeah. a little bit better, and so that you don't have to oh. do more things. But kind of like with with normal technical SEO, I I don't see JavaScript wow. SEO dying wow. because there's just so many things that you can do wrong, and it it takes a lot of experience to be able to debug and find out yeah. and improve things. And it keeps changing, right? There's new stuff, stuff coming oh, in. Yeah. And with every new bit on the web platform, you're like, does this work with Googlebot? So yeah. this is interesting. Sorry, 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 but I, I want to um, follow up on, on what he said. So you, you're saying that even if you guys get so, so good with JavaScript, obviously, basically resources, and I'm guessing some kind of technology that you use to optimize that, uh, you still think that JavaScript SEO is going to be, I mean, like, in, in this two years or three years, you still think it's going to be a thing? Because I had this concept it's going to dissolve. I, I mean, it's it's going to be a thing in that, uh, like, we, we'll be better at it, but there there's still, I mean, there are always technical details that you can get yeah. get working well or get working kind of well. kind of terribly. Oh yeah, and with JavaScript, the, it's like with JavaScript, I, like with with normal technical SEO, it's already hard, and it's something that that a lot of people struggle with, where it's like the internal linking and you have new unique URLs and all of these things. And with JavaScript, it's all hidden away, so you really have to know how, how JavaScript works. And uh, when something goes wrong, that's that's really not going to be trivial to find. And, and new frameworks, like new yeah. elements in, in Chrome, all of these things, they, they kind of come together. And but my logic is that you guys are using, sorry, the latest mm. version of Chrome. Yes. So, so when with new frameworks, they actually work in the latest version of Chrome. So eventually, it's going to be one to one. They are still yes and no. Is it like a naive thinking here? It's, it's a little little naive to think that because the the thing is that you are in the end still not. It's not that there's a human being sitting in front of it, looking at your website, and going like, "Huh, okay." <laughs> Uh, it is a technical infrastructure. No, I know. There is technical <laughs> infrastructure, <laughs> and there are so many interesting implementation details that um, can in interact with the web platform in interesting ways. To give you a very simple example, uh, what we're doing with web components, I'm writing the guidance right now, so excuse me if I'm not having like a very polished answer at this point. You get the raw answer from me. Um, well, we, like web, comp web components work fine in Chrome. We have the latest version of Chrome, Chrome 76, as of today, uh, actually a couple of days ago in Googlebot. That's fine. The thing there is we have to make a decision what to index. So as the user, depending, let's say like if I go to a website that has a, uh, has a web component and there's something in the Shadow DOM, then I see the Shadow DOM content. If I would run an Internet Explorer 10, I see the Light DOM content, which gets overwritten. So some people might be like, oh, yeah, so if I, if I have a fallback for crawlers that do not understand JavaScript, or I think I'm going to be in the first wave of indexing first, I put my, my fallback content into the light DOM. But then they, Googlebot never sees that. 
So that's still something that you need to know and be aware of. So you might end up with like some person coming to you and going like, this content is there, it's in the DOM. We don't understand why it's not showing up. And then you have to know, oh, that's because of JavaScript, specifically because of Shadow DOM. The Shadow DOM overrides the, the Light DOM and the way that the Googlebot works is it flattens the Shadow DOM into the DOM, overriding the Light DOM in this specific case. So to, to make my point from earlier, JavaScript SEO is not gonna go away, it's gonna change, right? It has. It used to be, it's and it's still much more technical. Oh yeah, that on one hand, and the the thing is like more experience. Today, JavaScript <laughs> SEO is about finding the pitfalls and the gotchas in today's technology, and like working around them, or like figuring out a better way to do them. And in the future, it's going to be more like, this is what can go wrong. It works out of the box, but these are these are the things that can still go so, wrong, so and these are the things that we need to do to debug them. Because we got a little bit geeky here, so just to um, uh, summarize that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, know you, I know you are trying to <laughs> simplify that, but just to simplify that uh, even further, basically what you're saying, like in the future, JavaScript SEO, SEO is going to evolve into making your job, so Google's job, a little bit easier and making sure that everything we push out to clients is basically very easy to crawl, index, and understand. I, I think that's one thing, but also all of the troubleshooting stuff mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of comes in that. And that's something where we, we can provide some tools to help, but like things like Shadow DOM, Light DOM, mm -hmm. it's like, how are you going to figure that out unless you already know no, that this is a, yeah. a thing? Or things like you're using Canvas to put uh, put content out there, and we think, oh, Canvas is an image, so we index it as an image. Mm -hmm. Like, eh. there's, a, there's a bunch of, of consulting. More, like, but right now, it's more figuring out what's going wrong, probably, and helping troubleshooting, and it's going to turn more into like, there's there's ten ways of doing this in JavaScript. Nine of them are terrible because, it's like, where, while developers are trying to figure out the right way, that's that's one of the reasons why I want developers and SEOs to sit on the same freaking table. Because developers are like, okay, so this is really hard for us. This is making everything slower, and they're not necessarily thinking about can Google index this or can can search index because, in uh, engine see this. Because I found out that for I know we have to finish, sorry. Yeah. I found out that for for a while that a lot of developers in the SEO sphere, okay, JavaScript SEO is just advising developers to pre-render. That was I was I was waking I, I, up at night crying with, when when I. I mean, you know, I, I think that was like a, because a good first step. What's happening? I, yeah. I think that that was a good first step. Good and I think step, but... three years ago, maybe. I, yeah, sorry, I mean, but I, I'm not a huge fan of. I mean, it's it's also one of those things where, in in the first step, you have to know what the limitations are, and when you know the limitations, you can kind of work around them. And if you have a website and you need to get it indexed, like you can say, well, Google will figure it out in a couple of years. <laughs> like that's not a good business model. <laughs> like you no, have to do I, what, I was what you have to do. Completely looking at how quickly you you catch up to technologies, how how well you're doing compared to like experimenting from a year ago. Yeah. I had this vision in my head. Okay, in one or two years, just that warms my heart because you're one of the few people who say we quickly catch up. Oh, we're gonna publish that quickly. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna publish that soon because. What you like the heavy lifting you did with indexing is tremendous because just two years ago you couldn't index six pages of JavaScript when the link was nested in JavaScript. So yeah, uh, sorry. So so basically you're saying it's going to evolve into being much more complex. I, I actually sorry <laughs> sorry I got excited. <laughs> I, I, like that. I like that idea. Uh, cool. It's going to be technical. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Let's take a break here. Right. I'll pause the recording before we fill up YouTube. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think we could go on forever, and probably there are a million questions from your side as well that you want to shove in. But we we have to take a break somewhere. So I'll stop here. Um, I'll set up the next sessions. You can you're welcome to drop the questions there, or of course ping us on Twitter or post in the Webmaster Help Forum. Uh, folks there are really helpful as well. Uh, with that. Let's take a break and wish you all a great weekend. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Bye. Now, if I can find the stop button. <laughs>